So this follows a story from last week. If you remember, the widow's might. Huh? Uh, the widow came in, put two copper coins in worth about two cents. And Jesus made the observation that all these people were giving from their hearts. But this woman really gave because it was all she had. Uh, and so this continues the journey. And then as he's walking out, they're impressed with the stones. It sounds like the country bumpkin has never been to a big city before because they're in awe of these 40-foot stones that are placed one upon another that took years of building on the backs of slaves and oppressed and Jews and all those kinds of things. But a magnificent structure, nothing like they've seen before. And then Jesus simply says, well, you know what? You see them? They're here. They're going to be torn down. They're going to fall. Not one stone will be left upon another. And this is in probably um, common era 32, 33, something like that. And we know from history that around uh, the year 66, there's a Jewish revolt and the Romans fight. Where the, this revolt lasts for about four years. Uh, and A.D. 70, uh, uh, the Romans just destroy the temple. It, it just like Jesus said, nothing's left upon each other. It's just something that they just can't even fathom. The Romans stuck it to them where it really counts, the center of their faith, the center of their commerce. The Jews are destroyed and crushed totally, right? I mean, the temple was the center of their faith. That's where God was. If you go into the Holy of Holies, only certain few people could go in there because it was so holy, because that's where God and the Ark of the Covenant were. And now, you know, Jesus kind of says, well, you know what? Wars are going to happen. Famine's going to happen. Probably the wars need to happen so this temple will get destroyed. But don't worry, basically, because things will happen. Birth pangs. The, the birth of something new will happen. And as we know, the temple never really gets built again. Uh, from there, it goes to different synagogues, like different churches throughout the countryside. And those evil Pharisees, well, they're sort of now the, the priests and the leaders and those, and hopefully they've learned enough from Jesus to, to know kind of what the faith story is. And we know that because the temple was destroyed, all faith is not lost because we're here. We're the, we're the descendants of those people. Our faith is, stems from their faith. And so we know that the, the word of God lives on despite whether there's a temple or not. But I can't imagine what it's like for the people there to, to watch their destruction. The only thing, the only ironic thing about this is as, as the, the last week's uh, story begins, the, the, the high priests and the scribes are walking around in these long flowing robes and they're, they're the cream of the crop and they're this and now the temple is destroyed and well, there goes their source of income. I can't imagine they're walking around in fineries anymore because there is no temple. There's no money for them to be living high off the land or high off the, the widow and orphans who gave money to, you know what I mean. Uh, and to put it in, in reality, I, you know, I wonder, the temples was an important place where people congregated. Um, think for a minute what would happen if this place got destroyed. What would that be like? What would we lose? What would we lose if this just came, in, like Trinity in Milwaukee, if it just burned and nothing was left? Nothing was left. What would that be like for us? Was it 1891 that this structure was built? And this is the third of three structures, and then we added on as time went on, as our needs grew and, and changed. What if everything was just destroyed? What would that be like for us? What would be your loss? Well, uh, now where do we go? Um, uh, we, we'd miss the, some of the sim symbols of our faith. Stained glass, altar, um, candles, um, these things that, that give us purpose. We, we would, in a sense, lose some of the history of Trinity. It would be up in flames or, or in dust somewhere. Um, what else would we lose if, if this place was demolished tomorrow or got destroyed? Would our faith continue? Would we, would we regroup and build another? Would we, would we join another congregation? Would we start a storefront somewhere? Would we, what would be the possibilities for us? And the key is, what would our faith be like? 
Is our faith so tied into a structure that we can't come out of it? I don't think so. I think we, we have a deeper sense of faith than that. This is important to us. This is a place where we come together. And we have symbols that remind us of the struggles of people. And we have reminders of the God that has been giving to all of us for, for years and years uh, of all people, of all times. And then we start anew. And we think new things and new thoughts. The birth pangs of starting again and again. And possibly again. And, and this leads, obviously, to the, the, what's going on in California. We know that people are losing their homes in paradise, California. The, the fires of the ravaged people and, and destroyed lives and property and, and people's livelihoods. It, it, now the survivors are sitting cuddled up in different places. And, and we're, we're, we're caught thinking, what would it be like for us if we were to lose everything? And it's hard to imagine it would be hard to imagine that. And how do they start over? I can only, I can only believe that, that, uh, that Jesus' teachings of, of compassion and mercy and, and giving and sacrificing and service is still strong and thrumming in our hearts and our souls and our hands and feet. And we have a sense of helping each other. You know? We have a sense that we can be there for each other in times of need, even far away. Even in California, I, I was looking online this morning, how can we help? And they said, don't send food or, or clothing or materials because there's simply no, no place to put it. Um, money and, and gift cards and different things. There, there are different organizations that are, are keyed. I've got sheets of paper on the back that got a list of a few, na a few places that offer assistance to the people in California. Take one up. I challenge you to get someone to be in charge and find one, and we can kind of donate to however we want to help the people in California who are just devastated. I can't go down there. I think I'd be in the way. I, my first impulse is to, to get on a plane and see how I can help, but sometimes I might just be in the way. And so what do you do? Y your hands are not necessarily tied. There are things to do to rebuild the structure of a person's life. Um, with the children's sermon, I forgot. I don't know if there's any kids that want to come up. <laughs> it's kind of late now. Uh, I was going to use cards. You know, you, you set up a house of cards, and how intricately you have to put the cards one on, on top of another, and how careful you have to be because one slip and they'll fall down. And you look at a card, and it's very two-dimensional. This side, this side, but then it's really thin. You think, uh, in a person... We have physical, emotional, or psychological. But if you don't have that spiritual component, it makes it tough to build. Then we have blocks that are sturdy and thick, and you can build easily. And you think, well, it's more three-dimensional. That's the strong spiritual sense that helps us rebuild our lives. We have a structure that we can knock down, but yet, with God, it builds us back up into something maybe new and different and maybe more exciting or, or what have you, more useful. We don't know. But there's always the possibility of all these things happening. The temple was destroyed and, and, and the faith was decentralized. And now it's all over the place in pockets. And then we follow Paul on his journey, setting up churches all over the Mediterranean, place to place, and getting his followers to set up churches and places of worship and coming together for the word and the sacraments and whatever else they did at the time. And for us to think about people who are displaced, even in our own neighborhoods. You know, we, we, we're very good about picking up a, a rake or a shovel or something to, to be an assistance to someone who's really lost some things. Our faith is not tied to one particular place. Our faith is tied to each other. Our faith is tied to the God who gives us and gives us and gives us. And, and as far as uh, what you give, remember Mother Teresa said small things with great love. And so the pressure's not on to do grandiose kinds of things, but any little thing helps. Yeah, the temple will be destroyed. Your faith will not. The end of the temple will be, will, will be the end, but the faith will not end. Your people are still God's people, he is telling them. And we it, rest assured that they still have Jesus to learn from and, and experience from 
But you know, soon after that, Jesus will leave them, and then they've got their connection with God in a new kind of a way. And they grow in that kind of a way, too. It doesn't take much. Uh, the grandeur of things can sometimes, like the stones of the temple, can be in our eyes sometimes really cool because we like large. Large is the better, you know. Um, when I went to a convention, there were 37,000 people there. And I think, you know, in this temple, of huge stones and things and grandeur, but then you think of the little widow who's thrown in two cents, and that is grandeur. That is what really is grandeur. We sometimes have it opposite. Our structures will be destroyed or may fall apart. The faith of God will not. The presence of God will not leave us ever. And that's the, the thing that the, Jesus continues to tell them all the time. It says in Hebrews, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, as Jeff had read this morning. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching Jesus calls us to be our best selves in the midst of all that is going on around us. With that, the people say, Amen.